All right, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to introduce optimization problems. When I hear the word optimize, I like to think about making something optimal, making something the best. But what the best is will really depend on the situation. In general, we can just say that optimization is using calculus to maximize or minimize something in a real life context. We're doing an application type problem here. So optimization means different things depending on what subject you're studying or what sort of context you're in. But for us, we can just think of trying to find the maximum or the minimum using calculus. So what might we be trying to optimize? If we were in a business context, we might be trying to optimize our spending and our money flow. So we might be trying to maximize profit and minimize cost. Or I like to focus on a more personal type situation where we might be trying to optimize. So let's say we're trying to maximize the space available to us while minimizing the amount of materials we need. In this series of videos about optimization, I'm gonna focus on this maximizing space, minimizing materials type of problem. We're going to look only at rectangular type objects. You can do optimization with all sorts of objects in calculus. There's lots of examples that show up. Basically, there are no bounds to the type of optimization problems we could do, but I'm gonna focus specifically on a sort of simple set of examples because the principles we use to solve those problems will apply to any of the other more complicated ones you could come up with. So the basic idea is that we're going to use our first derivative test to identify the maximum or minimum in a situation. First derivative test, we find the critical points by setting the derivative equal to zero, and then we test those critical points to find which ones are the maximums and minimums. But in order to do this, since we're given a real life context, we need to first convert the situation into math. So that's what makes these problems a little more tricky is that when you are in a situation where you're trying to optimize, you're not just handed the math equations. Instead, you need to convert the situation into math. So as part of these problems, we're going to find two mathematical statements or expressions, and we call one the constraint and the other the objective. I like to think of the constraint as the parts of the problem you can't change. You're constrained by them. So those are the fixed things that you don't have any control over but the objective is the goal. It's what you're trying to maximize or minimize. So we use those two words just to keep us organized with what we are doing in the problem. As part of our examples, we are always going to identify the constraint and the objective. Okay, so let's try this on an example so you can see the process that we follow. The situations are always going to be a little different, but the process is the same for each of these problems. Let's suppose you are building a planter, like a planter box to put some plants in and you have enough cedar to build a 20 foot boundary or perimeter. That's just the edges of the planter. What dimensions should the planter be in order to maximize the area? So you've already have the materials to make the planter box. You need to just determine the length and the width in order to make the maximum area that you can use to garden in. Okay, so our first step is always going to be to draw a picture and choose some variables. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangular shape here and I'm pretty simple, I always use X and Y, so I'm just going to label one of the sides X and the other side Y. Our second step is going to be to convert the situation into math. Something that might help you is to think of this as translating. So we're just taking a situation that's written out and we're translating it into math. Math is a language in itself, we're just trying to write equivalent math statements that represent the problem we were given. So as part of the problem, we were told that we only have 20 feet of materials. So whatever the boundary of the box is, or the perimeter of our planter, needs to add to 20. So if I add the sides up, I have y plus x plus y plus x, and that needs to equal 20. Or really, we have two y's and two x's. Then we're also interested in the area. We want to maximize the area. The area here is just x times y, length times width. So remember that objective and constraint I talked about? We're going to label these here, figuring out which one is which. So we only have 20 feet of materials to use, and so that is our constraint equation. We need the perimeter to add to 20. We can't use any more than that, and we wanna use all of it since we're trying to maximize our space. This means that the area is our objective. We're trying to maximize the area, so this is our goal. I'm also just going to write this as A equals XY, just giving it a variable to represent it to help us as we write out some of our work. So since we are trying to find the maximum of the area, our goal is to take the derivative of that objective equation, the area equation, in order to find the maximum. 
we want to apply first derivative test to it to figure out where the maximum value is. But currently it has two variables in it. And okay, we could maybe take this derivative, use implicit differentiation, sure. But we have this other equation we haven't used yet. And so what I want to do instead is use the constraint equation to help me take the derivative of the objective. So my next step is going to be to substitute the constraint equation into the objective equation so that we only have one variable that we're worried about. So I have 2y plus 2x equals 20. I'm going to solve so I have y equals something and then plug it in to my objective. You could also do x equals something. I just almost always tend to do y equals just to keep it simple in my brain. So here I'm going to move the 2x to the other side and then divide by 2. So I'm getting that y is 20 minus 2x all over 2, which if we distribute that 2 into both terms is just 10 minus x. So now I can take that y equals 10 minus x and substitute it in to my area. So instead of area equals x times y, I can write it as x times 10 minus x. And distributing, I get that the area is 10x minus x squared. Now I can just apply the first derivative test to this new objective equation that only has one variable. So I can take the derivative of a, that's my area, I'm getting 10 minus 2x, and now I can set this equal to zero to find my critical points. So let's move the 2x over to the other side and then divide by two. So I'm getting that x is five. Now we only have one critical point and truthfully, you can almost always assume that this is just doing the thing you want it to. 5 isn't going to just give you the minimum area, it's most likely the maximum here. But it does not hurt to just do the first derivative test really quickly to make sure that this is indeed the maximum. So you can just choose two test points, substitute them into the derivative, and check the sign of the derivative in those intervals. I'm getting that the derivative is positive before 5, and then negative after 5, so 5 is indeed the maximum of our area equation. So we know that x equals 5 is one of our dimensions we want to get the maximum area. Now we just need to solve for the other variable. We need an x and a y. So I plug in 5 for x in my formula that said y equals 10 minus x, and I'm getting that y is also 5. So this means that the dimensions of 5 feet by 5 feet will give the maximum area for the planter. And we did it. We found the maximum area that we could have with our constraint of only having 20 feet of material. So something you might notice is that this is a square planter. It turns out that anytime you're trying to maximize the area of a rectangle, you should actually just make it a square. So having a maximum area is always a square. This means that the rest of the problems you see about optimization are gonna have something else thrown in them to change it a little bit. Otherwise, we're just gonna be making square boxes for the rest of the time we do optimization, and we wanna consider more interesting situations than that. But this is cool to note that anytime you're trying to maximize the area, having equal side lengths is the way to do it. Okay, so that is our introduction to optimization. These steps that we followed, you can follow every time. We draw a picture, we translate the situation into math, labeling our constraint and objective equations. Then we substitute in the constraint into the objective equation. We take the derivative using the first derivative test to determine the maximum or minimum, whichever one we're looking for and then we solve for the other variable. We always follow the same steps, just what those steps look like when we do them out mathematically is going to change depending on the situation and the equations that we end up coming up with. Again, to see some more optimization problems with things that get a little more tricky, check out my other video on optimization examples. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.